When it comes to financial planning or personal finance, just like the name sounds, it's extremely personal. Imagine a room with 10 people. Each and every person will have a different personality. And similarly, each and every individual is going to have a different financial need or a different financial goal. And which is why you or me or everyone else for that matter requires a fundamental financial plan that can align with their individual financial goals. And for that, mutual funds provide the best way to invest and align your investments accordingly. Let me help you with an example. Imagine a cricket team. We all have played cricket or at least watched cricket on TV one or the other time. Now, in a cricket team, you might love that one batsman who comes in every time and scores a century. However, you cannot create an entire cricket team just using that one famous batsman. You can already start to imagine the problems here, can't you? Well, to build that cricket team, you require a good batsman, you require a good bowler and you also require a wicketkeeper. And only then will that team actually function. Similarly, a mutual fund does not invest only into a single asset class or a single security. It takes the approach of investing in various different asset classes so that you get the benefit of all different assets and not just the risk of a single asset class. And that is why mutual funds can help us align our financial goals according to what we require in life. However, the question to ask here is how do you really select such kind of mutual funds? Well, now let us take a look at some parameters that will help you to choose the best mutual funds. The first parameter to look at is your own investment objectives. Now, depending upon what kind of an investment objective or financial goal you have, the kind of asset class that you need to invest in changes. Let me help you with an example. Say for example, there is Ayush and there is Abhishek. Ayush's investment objective is to buy a nice laptop that he can use for work. However, Abhishek's investment objective is to buy a nice house for the future. Now, looking at their objectives, what do you think? Who has a higher time period to invest and who has a bigger risk appetite to invest? Well, like you guessed, Ayush can only invest for a short period of time because his investment objective is small, that is a laptop. But Abhishek has to invest for a longer period of time in order to accumulate that wealth to buy his dream house. And this is why specifying your investment objectives is the first parameter you should take a look at. Now, moving on, the second parameter aligns with the first parameter. And so, the second parameter is the investment horizon. Let's continue the example of Ayush and Abhishek to move forward. Now, since Ayush only wants to invest for a laptop, the time horizon he will be investing for could be maybe two to three years. However, since Abhishek wants to buy that dream house, he would want to invest for greater than 10 years or so to achieve that goal. And so, in this case, Ayush can choose instruments such as debt securities and bonds to invest in, which will help him achieve his goal in a short period of time. And Abhishek can choose a riskier asset class such as equity to invest his money for more than 10 plus years. Now with this, you know how your investment objective and your investment horizon go hand in hand. Now once you have these two ready, the third thing to look at is the tax saving that you can do using the mutual funds. Now, you cannot save tax by investing in every kind of mutual fund. However, there are specific kinds of mutual funds called ELSS mutual funds or equity linked savings schemes funds. In this kind of funds, the fund manager invests more than 80% of the investment amount into equity or equity related instruments. However, you have a statutory three-year lock-in in these kinds of funds, but they provide an opportunity of saving Rs 1.5 lakh every single year under the Section 80C of the Income Tax Act. And so, if you want to save taxes using mutual funds, you can opt for ELSS mutual funds to do so as well. The next parameter you have to take a look at is called the Total Expense Ratio. Total Expense Ratio or TER are the charges that are charged by the AMC or the mutual fund company. 
Now these are the charges that are charged by the fund management team in order to manage your investments carefully and to provide that excess returns over the markets. However, these expense ratio charges can eat into your portfolio returns over a long period of time and therefore it is better to invest in mutual funds that have a lower expense ratio. Now with this, let's take a look at the next parameter. The next parameter is the fund performance and the fund management team's performance. Well, every single mutual fund has something called the benchmark which it has to outperform or well, at least match the level of returns that benchmark is providing. Say for example, a large cap mutual fund will take the benchmark as the Nifty 50. And if the fund is able to give you returns more than the Nifty 50, it is said that the fund has outperformed the benchmark. And those are the kind of funds that you're looking for. And to look for such funds, check out the fund management history and the fund performance history. However, please do note that the future performance of the mutual funds may exactly not be the same as their past performance. And that is why this requires a careful study. And hence, if you're not able to put in the effort, please go approach your registered investment advisor. And the final parameter to notice is called the exit load. Now, apart from the total expense ratio that is charged from you as the fund management charges, there is also an exit load attached to some mutual funds. In this exit load, if you redeem your units or exit your investment, then you charge the fee. And if the fee is high, it is going to eat into your portfolio returns. And therefore, please choose a mutual fund that has zero or minimal exit loads. Now, using all these parameters, you can go ahead and select a mutual fund that aligns with your investment goals. And to do it and make it more simpler, you have something called the mutual fund fact sheet. This fact sheet is available for every single mutual fund in the market. And this fact sheet shows you all the figures, illustrations and the fund management theme for that particular fund. And so you can make use of mutual fund fact sheets to really understand about the fund that you want to invest in. And therefore, it is really imperative to jot down your own financial plan first and then understand the various risks involved in different kinds of mutual funds like debt funds and equity mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all simulated documents carefully.